Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today's video is a tabletop review and comparison of the original model 1873 Winchester rifle compared with the contemporary newly manufactured uh, Winchester model 1873 rifles as branded by Winchester and manufactured by Moroku in Japan. First, I'm going to start off with a brief history, just explaining how the original 1873 came into history, as well as some of the different variations, calibers, different configurations that you would find in the original rifle. And then we will move into the modern day reproductions of the Winchester 1873 to show you how they've changed, what changes they've made, exactly how original are they, and how close they do represent the original rifle. If that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. Okay, now let's start off with a brief history. So, I am going to be doing a video covering all of the rifles from the original 1860 Henry up until the 1894 Winchester. Uh, I do have an example of every single rifle in between, some original, some reproduction, so I will go over that in history in depth. Uh, just really quick, a little bit of the backstory here. The story really begins with Benjamin Tyler Henry who did develop the 1860 Henry rifle. Now, when he did cross paths with Oliver Winchester, who at the time was a shirt designer, uh, they really went in together on producing and manufacturing and selling the 1860. And at the time, it was an innovative and it was just revolutionary design. A lever gun, which you could load on Sunday and shoot all week long. This came about during the Civil War and the amount of firepower that that put in the hands of an individual soldier was just monumental. Now there was a loading feature where you would insert the rounds through the front through a loading opening by rotating the end of the barrel and the magazine tube off to the side, allowing your rounds to be dropped in from the front. There was a spring-loaded tab that would, ex that would come up through the bottom. Uh, that you would first bring up before loading and then as the rounds fed the tab would push the rounds through the tube into the uh, obviously the feeding way for it to start feeding. Now that rifle did use a toggle link system which would stay in development throughout it was the 1860, the 1866 and then in the 1873. Now Oliver Winchester and Benjamin Tyler Henry did separate paths in a less than favorable way around the time of the development of the 1866. Now here I do have the 1866. This is actually also a newly manufactured Winchester rifle. It's obviously the same sort of deal as we have on these. Of course you have the brass frame and the wood stocks and the one real thing that changed was, was the King's Patent loading gate design that this would come about. Uh, now due to the brass frame it was a little bit heavier and uh, a little bit more time consuming to make. So some revisions needed to be made, and the ultimate revision made was into the 1873, which we have here. Now, that was a very abridged history. Again, I will be going into that in much more detail in one of our next upcoming videos. So into the development of the 1873, a few very important things happened. First of all, we go from the brass frame uh, receivers to the iron receivers, and this would stay about in the model 1873 until around 1860 when they would go to steel. Another really important innovation is we moved, so in the 1860 and the 1866, those were originally chambered in the 44 Henry, which was a rimfire cartridge. Now rimfire casings, you do have a little bit of a, a disadvantage there. Of course, the firing mechanism is not as strong as the center fire. The casings cannot be reloaded. And overall, they were not nearly as reliable as the center fire. So when the 1873 comes about, it is first introduced in the 44 WCF, which stands for Winchester Center Fire, which will later be known as 4440 by Colt when Colt would come out with their Frontier pistol, which would be chambered in the same round. Now at the time, during ammunition development, manufacturers were very keen on keeping the branding of the ammunition uh, cartridges the same. And if a different manufacturer, such as Colt, was going to chamber a, a round, or a cha I'm sorry, chamber a fire, firearm with the same ammunition, they wouldn't want to put the word Winchester or WCF on their firearm, so they usually would come up with a different term. For example, you might be able to read this as 32 WCF for Winchester Centerfire, which is here on the remanufactured one, it says 4440, which is our first inconsistency. That of course would say 44 WCF if it were original rifle, but of course it isn't, and that's really just a minute point. So these would be manufactured between 1873 and 1923 and roughly 720,000 units would be made. 
So there were essentially three models of the 1873 known to collectors. Obviously the first model, the second model, and the third model. Now the distinguishing characteristics between those models can usually be described as the difference in serial block or the production date range uh, dividing the three models. And the only other really physical difference would be the dust cover, so the way the dust cover attaches. On a first model, you had a sort of a morrised portion over the top of the ejection port where the dust cover would just slide into that and then slide open. In the second model, you had it just like the third where there's actually a machined rail in the rear that that slides across. And bringing that in, that's what that looks like. But on the second model, it's actually a separate piece that's screwed onto the top of the receiver. So you'll see a little screw head there. Now the third model, like this one, is just one single machine piece right here directly into the receiver. So it is one, uh, one full entire piece, unlike the second model, which is a separate piece, which is attached by a screw. Now the first models were between 1873 and 1879. Second models are 1879 to 1882. And third models are 1882 to 1923. This one, like I said, was made in 1892, so it is a third model. Obviously, you can also tell because of the uh, single machine piece for the uh, top cover rail. Now Winchester also made these in three standard configurations. You have this one which was the most popular which is a 20 inch octagonal barrel, what they call their sporting rifle. The rifles are noted by having an end cap right here at the front of the forearm in a crescent shaped to the end of the butt plate. Now this also has a straight stock. Different variations of these could be made uh, depending on what you wanted. You could get them with the octagonal barrel like this one. You can get them with a rounded barrel. You could get them in blued or colored case hardened. This was originally blued, and that would be on the receiver. You could get them with a straight walnut stock like this, or you could get a pistol grip stock like this. But of course, as time went on, more and more options would be available. So you see more of the differentiating models within, you know, kind of the later or within the later models, like the second model, the third model. Don't see as too many different variances in the changes in models in the first model. Uh, of course, those produced between 1873 and 1879. You could get different magazine tube lengths. You could get different barrel lengths. So today, and you know, and I'll touch on this a little bit later. You can get what's known as the short rifle from Winchester and the current day Winchester and their models, which is actually a rifle but with a 20-inch barrel. You could get that originally. Now that would be special order. It wouldn't have been what they would have originally offered just exactly like what I have here. Now, like I said before, this is the Winchester 1866. This is, of course, the new manufacturer of Winchester. This is not an original. But you see the crescent-shaped butt plate, the four-end end cap, and the 20-inch barrel. This is also a round barrel. So you could, back in the day, order it in this configuration. That was fine, but this was not a standard offering. It is currently a standard offering for Winchester if you want one of these reproduction rifles. So like I mentioned, the original caliber, that was 4440, and that was on all guns offered between 1873 and 1879 were the first model guns. Then in 1879 to 1882, well, technically onward, so 1879 onward, they had introduced 3840, also known as 38 WCF, Winchester Centerfire. In 1882, they have 3220, or 32 WCF, offered as an option, and that was, of course, the start of production of the third model on. This one here, as I mentioned, is in 3220. And then in 1884, they came out with the same rifle in a 22 rim fire. Backing up a little bit, the two other configurations, so I, I talked about the sporting rifle configuration. This was also offered in a carbine length. Now, the carbine would basically, would essentially be a 20 inch barrel. And again, these were standard models. You could order them in different con configurations. And I'll roll in a picture, but you have a 20 inch barrel. You will see instead of a end cap, you will have a barrel band and the butt plate, instead of being crescent, was what was known as a shotgun or modified shotgun, so it was more of a straight walled butt, butt plate. You would also usually have the addition of a saddle ring carbine, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a saddle ring, which is why they know them as a saddle ring carbine. Uh, that was so you, you could attach the rifle to your saddle uh, while you were riding, saddle ring carbine. The other option was a musket, and the musket was in the 30 inch barrel. It also had the modified or shotgun modified stocks of the straight butt plate. The four intended to travel most of the length underneath the barrel, and they had provisions for a bayonet lug, and when this first came out, this was really intended to be an offering for as a military rifle. Now let's go ahead and jump into the comparison, starting here with the stocks. So as I mentioned, the original stock was a walnut, and 
I don't know specifically what grade they use, and I'm sure that the grades would change uh, as if you wanted a more premium option, which you could order, and that was fine. Of course, you will see that this is in the straight stock configuration, which was the standard offering and the uh, sporting rifle configuration. And then you have a crescent-shaped butt plate. Now, the modern day Winchester 73 rifles, you can get in two configurations. You can get in the pistol grip. So you see that there's a swoop down here. It's more of what they call their pistol grip. And then you have the straight stock, just like this one. Now, this is a grade two or grade three walnut that's offered on their standard models. At the 2018 SHOT Show, they did just release what they call the Deluxe Sporting Rifle, and it does come with a pistol grip stock and a grade, I believe, a grade 5 walnut. It's got checkering on it. It looks beautiful, but uh, just like you could back in the day, you can get more modified options. Now, the butt plates, of course, are crescent on these. These are also in the 20-inch Sporting Rifle, so the butt plates on this are uh, color case hardened as well. One other point of note is the fitment. So if I take, this is obviously the original, the transition from the wood to the receiver is very, very smooth. I mean, if you kind of close your eyes and just rub your finger over that, you almost don't even feel a transition. It's just the fitment is fantastic. Now, it could be, obviously, this uh, rifle is over 100 years old. Um, it could be that, you know, it's just over time, it's kind of worn down to a really smooth finish. But, you know, the motto always goes, you know, they don't make it like they used to. I like to believe that that was actually intentional. I mean, right up here on the top of the tang, everything is just smooth perfectly matched and fit together. Now not so much on the new ones, and I'll bring this in. You might not be able to tell, but there's just, it's, I mean, I can get my fingernail under there, kind of where that's changing. That transition just isn't nearly as smooth. And, you know, right up here, you can, you can kind of see, I mean, it's not, I'm kind of nitpicking. And here's the other one, I mean, you can kind of see it more on this one, but you, you can see just, it, it's not fitted nearly as well. Again, that is kind of a nitpicky detail. Now keep in mind, these do retail in like the twelve to $1,500 price range where you see it. So I would like to see a little bit of a better finish and fitment there. Uh, there's nice and pretty smooth. Uh, you do have a little bit of an opening there. Uh, this side's even worse. But I mean, again, it's not awful. It's just not nearly as nice as the original. They could have definitely spent a little bit more time sanding that down, but they probably don't, you know, hand finish these and piece them together like they used to. Uh, if they did that, these might be $2,000 instead of $1,200. I will say though, and this is a Uberti 1876, I imagine their 1873s are the same, but the fitment on these is actually a lot better. Sorry, I'm getting it to focus here. There you go. So, you know, the fitment on here is just, it actually is more reminiscent of the original. It's just very, very smooth, uh, which, you know, a little bit of a little ledge there, but definitely a lot nicer than the Winchester ones, the new ones. Now let's take a look here at the receiver. So obviously on the new ones, you can get these in either color case hardened or blued. Of course, the originals were the same way. You could get them in color case hardened or blued. Now I know a lot of the finish on this original one here is gone, but you can still see remnants of that bluing. I know the direct lights coming down kind of shine back at you and make that hard to see. But um, those are the options available to you. Now the original 1873 were offered in an iron frame. That's what they transitioned from the brass was to iron. Uh, in about 18, 18, I believe it was 1880 or so, that's when they transitioned the original 1873 to a steel frame. Now these, of course, the remakes are a steel frame. Uh, they obviously are not iron, but they are color case hardened. Now the color case hardening process is not the same as how it used to be. Um, they would actually use heat and fire by mashing up bones and sticks and coal and things like that to heat. Uh, the metal and it would kind of leave this swirly type uh, pattern in it which actually at first they went through great lengths to try to get rid of because they thought it would look ugly but a lot of people ended up liking it and it does give a unique signature to the rifle and that's true on these today every single pattern in the color case hardening is going to be different so you do kind of get your own unique fingerprint on the gun now the way they do it today is different they use actually they apply some sort of an acid or a chemical to it to give it that finish it's not an actual color case hardening per se, but it gives you that classic look, which still looks incredibly nice. And I'll bring that in there for you. Um, it's it's a really a gorgeous gun. Uh, they really are that. I love the color case hardening on them. So also here underneath the lever, if you pull this, there is a little tab here. It's kind of a safety plunger. You see it there. The lever has to be fully engaged to be able to fire. If it's out at all, 
like it is now. It's not pushing it in. It can't fire. Now on this one in the Winchesters, the, the new Winchesters, it is pretty stiff. So you do have to have a really good positive grip on that once you close the lever up. So if you're trying to do quick shots or quick transitions between targets, you will need to be cognizant of that. And I could see that kind of getting in the way of some people. Now you can take those parts out. You can put in weaker springs and you can lighten that up. It's, so it's really not a big deal, but you might have to tune that up if you want to be able to really quickly transition between targets. And then of course on the original one, you have the same thing, but this is like, it's it's so weak. It's, I mean, obviously I can't pull the trigger. I mean, if it's the hammer's back, uh, but it's so, you know, it's almost on just this, its own weight of the lever being closed is enough to push it in. Now that's most likely because this is over a hundred years old. I'm sure the day it was made, the springs were a lot tighter, uh, but that's just one thing to consider as well. Now these came with a little knob here that you could turn that could lock the lever down. As you see, the design on this one is just kind of curved. It was originally blued. This one has the same thing, the newer ones, but it is a little bit longer and the design is a little bit different, but it does and works the exact same way. This one's kind of tight, but that locks it over there. Just the design's a little different, but same same concept. Now, one other thing that's a little bit interesting is here at the top. Now we mentioned, mentioned the first, second, and third model. So this little rail is indicative of a third model rail, kind of like on the original one you saw. It is all machined into as one piece in the receiver. Yeah, you see a little set screw on top with this little it's like a, a screw with a, another little set screw next to it, which is a little bit weird. It's almost like a hybrid transitional second model and third model, because the second model, that would be a separate piece mounted in with a screw like this, just one screw. So that's kind of strange. I don't know why they did that. It's maybe obviously durability or to mount something on the inside. I don't know, but that is technically not accurate. So one other thing is the firing pin or firing pin extension. So if I rack the lever, obviously you see that firing pin extension open up and then it closes. And then right here, and I could push that far. I'll do this where you can see it. See, I could push that. You see, I push that in. So what happens is when that racks and I pull the trigger, obviously the hammer is hitting the back of that and it's sending the firing pin, which is kind of in the center of this bolt into the back of the primer and then it fires. Now on the new Winchesters, of course, that all works the same way, but you'll notice right back here, there's this sort of little spring-loaded pin. It's kind of hard to show you that, but I'm pushing on it. It's like a little spring-loaded. So that's different, and that was not originally how it was designed. And then right up here on top, you see kind of these little pins and this little tab here. I think that's to hold all that in place. I'm sorry about the focus on this. There you go. So you see that kind of with spring-loaded pin. Now that is not correct. They were not made that way. Now my interpretation is they probably did that for safety reasons. So if it were fixed, if you have a lot of buildup or grime in there, you could get potential for slam fire. So if the firing pin was in the forward position when you close that lever, especially if you closed it hard enough, you could fire the gun. Uh, I guess it happened. With this, since this is spring-loaded, it indexes the firing pin away from the primer and it will require that little spring-loaded plunger to be hit by the hammer for it to fire. So it's just an updated version, making it a little bit more modernized, a little bit safer. Okay, so up here at the fore end, obviously all three have a single piece walnut. They are essentially the same size and then they're fitted with this end cap here. Now up at the top, you do just have a buckhorn rear sight that can be graduated up by moving it up an elevated ramp and the new ones work the exact same way. Now the buckhorn sights on the new ones look a little bit taller. They just look a little bit different in design, but they still function the same way. On both, you do have an octagonal barrel and they are blued, whether you get the blued frame or the case hardened frame. So that'll happen. And that was that way on the original as well. And then you have the full length magazine tube running underneath the length of the barrel. Now, as I mentioned before, caliber designations on the original guns would be marked either 44 WCF, 38 WCF, or 32 WCF, obviously meaning Winchester centerfire. The new ones are offered in 357 38 special, 4440, which was the only original caliber, and then 45 Colt, which these are never made, obviously, in 45 Colt or 357. Now, for the 4440, it is marked 44 40, which would technically be incorrect. On the original guns, it would be marked 44. WCF or Winchester center fire, as I mentioned before. One other thing I'll show you is the roll markings on the original barrel, Winchester, repeating arms, New Haven, Connecticut, and it has the patent dates and everything like that. And of course, this has the Winchester trademark plus the caliber 4440. I know this is backwards. Uh, 
and uh, there's that indication 4440 instead of 44 Winchester center fire. And then on the other side, this is going to be upside down, but it's got Moroku, Japan, imported by, and then, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, of course, the trademarks are way off, and these are Moroku guns. They are made in Japan. Uh, so the trademarks are not even close, but that's to be expected. It's not an original Winchester. Now, up here at the top, which is interesting, you do have the Winchester proofs, which is pretty cool. So that would be very reminiscent of an older Winchester. One final note is the front sight. So the front sight on the original is a much more simple, just a little front post uh, dovetailed into the front. And on the, the new Winchester ones, you have the same thing, a front post dovetail, but the front sight base is a little bit taller and has a little brass bead there just to help your eye pick it up a lot clearer. Just an upgrade, but not necessarily original. So to finish this off, I just want to talk about the general specifications of the two. So let's just get into a, a, an overall comparison. So the weight of the new one, and this of course is in the 20 inch sporting rifle, is seven pounds, eight ounces. The, the original one admittedly feels heavier, especially on the front end. And what I can attribute that to is this is a 32 caliber and these, this one is a, this one's in 4440 and this one's in 357. So obviously more of the interior of the bore on these is bored out, whereas this is just a much smaller caliber. So you have a lot more of that material in here. And I can definitely feel that, but it almost feels like about a full pound heavier. So you definitely feel weight difference. I don't know if this were like, if this were a 4440, how the weight difference would be. Probably still be a little bit heavier. They probably lightened up the newer ones a little bit. So there is that. So you're gonna have, feel a little bit of a weight difference. Now here's the interesting thing. The overall length on the original is exactly 42 and a quarter inches, identical on the remake. So the footprint is exactly the same. And the length of pull is 12 and three quarter inches. That's the length from the trigger face to the back of the stock. That is identical on the new one. So their actual length of pull and length are the same. And the weight is maybe just a little bit lighter on the new one. So they did a pretty good job of replicating the dimensions and the feel and the style. When you shoulder the original versus shouldering one of the newer ones, you definitely can feel a difference. Just the weight and the, uh, just everything feels a little bit more glossy and modernized. Uh, of course, I, you know, you're talking about a over a hundred year old gun versus a brand new gun. But just in the overall stylizing, you can tell it's like an upgraded model. But they really did do a good job of keeping the original form and feel as much as they could while still updating it for, keep in mind, people who are interested in these are competition shooters and things like that. So they did, uh, I, I think it's a happy medium and they did a pretty good job. Also, I wanna let you know real quick of the different configurations of the 1873 that you can get from Winchester. You can go check them out on their webpage to see these, but I'll uh, kind of gloss through them real quick. So you can get the uh, 1873 Deluxe Sporting. That's the one I told you about that they just released at SHOT Show. So uh, it's got a pistol grip stock with the grade five or grade six walnut, the 24 inch uh, blue barrel. You can get, and it's, it's actually a half round and a half octagonal, which is pretty cool. And they did actually offer those barrels in that configuration, half round, half, half octagonal. So you can get that as well. Then they have the 1873 Carbine, and I talked about that. It's, uh, it, it's basically the full length, um, I'm sorry, the stock has the modified shotgun, so it's kind of the straight uh, end plate on the on the butt plate. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. You'll have a barrel band up here by the handguard, and then you have a 20-inch barrel. Now, you do have the addition of the saddle ring on that, and that, I believe, is only offered in a blued finish. Then you have the 1873 Sporter Octagonal, which is this straight stock, exactly in this configuration. You can get this either blued or in color case hardened. Then you have the exact same gun down here with a pistol grip, same thing, blued or colored case hardened. And then you can get the short rifle. And the short rifle is just like that 1866 I showed you. It is every way identical to this configuration except the barrel is 20 inches. That's basically it. Well, that is all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you enjoyed that, please let me know by leaving a like. If you wanna see more content like this, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, please leave those down in the comment section. I will try to address as many of those as I can. Again, this is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time.